Thank you guys for being here. At the beginning of each show, we are doing a little uh, housekeeping. And that is everything that you see in here, um, in all these shows, are not only for views, but for sales as well. So if you uh, like anything, just get, at it, get in touch with us and uh, we'll start from there. And we are also able to ship all over the world. Um, John, to Thailand, to Dallas, <laughs> Romania, why not? And um, what else happened uh, this week, John? Remember, there's a lot of things happening. Oh gosh, it's been a been a bit of a blur of a week. I, let's see, we've had uh, we had the big flower show here, and so there were hundreds of people that were here at the studio uh, doing the the Houston Flower Show. And uh, so there were people wandering around. Uh, did you uh, do you have any other events going on? Yes, we still have um, our um, group exhibition here in Silver Street Studios that is called um, Silver Street Studios, Artists at Silver Street Studios. And it lasts until June 4. And uh, both uh, John and I have several pieces in the show. Um, those are mine uh, over here, and they are part of the synopsis series. Actually, uh, the one called Petal Lines Down Bottom, I will talk about today, um, to tell you what's going on in there. And I have another piece, uh, a little more contemporary, more uh, mod modern. They are printed on canvas they are quite large 36 by 36 inch and um, also for uh, also in this exhibition and john you know what done right those those hang right outside my door and you wouldn't believe how many people take pictures of those two pieces so hopefully that means uh, the interest is high uh and they'll, they'll sell soon yes i mean i i had quite a few people uh, last saturday at the biannual asking you know what are they they can't make their minds but they're lovely they want both of uh both of them but mm, you know so they say i had a lot of um guys asking for the business card you know i will we will get in touch with you about this business hopefully they will you know art art it's a process you it's an investment and you have to live with it for a long time right right and you and I've got uh, well, I've got at least three. There are actually more than than this, but these are the three that were original to the the show. And uh, Ayututaki is a, a nine by twelve uh, abstract painting on paper, uh, and I've got it here. In fact, these things just look so much better when they're framed. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, yes, and I, I agree. You know, uh, generally art should be in a frame. Uh, actually, I talked with you a few days ago. It's like buying a, a diamond ring. You don't just buy a diamond. A diamond. <laughs> You're gonna have to buy the frame of it. <laughs> and uh, you buy the ring. Yeah. So we. So uh, the other two pieces are, are uh, fire break. This is a, a fire series. Of, uh, uh, you can we go back? Go down. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is a series I've done in studies in red. Uh, which I think are just lovely. And then the other one is Golden Dawn, which is uh, um, one of my favorite pieces. Uh, hundreds of little squares of paper that uh, from an old Latin textbook that I then painted over. It gives it a really interesting look. So those are there. And then we were able to put in some extra stuff. Uh, so I threw in uh, She's Watching, or She Watches, the nun, with her yardstick just barely peeking out to let you know that she will hit you. Um, I think she was my second grade teacher. And uh, then the seed uh, is a 36, uh, is it 30, uh, yes. 36 by 36? Yeah, square. It's a big piece. I just love the colors in it. So that's there on display as well. And an unexpected visit uh, the other day just led with a sale of five pieces. I just had this uh, um, it's actually a gallery owner and he stopped by to have a chat with me and as he's talking, he's looking on the walls and he said, oh my God, I love this 
um, black and white photography that was just above my desk. And he said, I'm going to buy all four of them, just redesigning my bathroom. It's a black and white bathroom. And these are exactly what I want. So he made the first purchase. And then later on that day, he turned back to continue a story he had left uh, unfinished. And as he talks with me, his eyes goes to another piece and said, oh, I truly, truly love this one too. So I'm just going to buy it right now. I was like, oh my God, what just happened? <laughs> so I was um, very humbled and very honored to have this uh, in a private collection. And that's the way it should happen. You know, when, when somebody falls in love with a piece, that's when it should sell. Um, and he had lots of love, apparently. <laughs> yes. And um, so I well, am. Go ahead. I am uh, honored to be in my residency program, the Proyectos de Residencia out of Mexico City. And uh, as part of my art project, uh, group project, we uh, have an artsy show and artsy.net is a pretty prestigious place to have your art uh, for sale. And uh, this one is for sale, El Tunnel, as well as others from the, from the group. Uh, this one is uh, available online for sale. And that's, that's a, quite an honor. And that'll be up into June, I believe. That, uh, but the Zona Maco is going on. That is in full flight right now, which is the biggest art fair in Latin America. And that's going on in Mexico City. And so the same gallery is uh, represented through Sonamaco. So I am kind of indirectly uh, represented there as well. Uh, and so people will be able to see my work and pick up contact information. So hopefully that will lead to some more sales. Very, yes. very much of an honor. It's, it's quite something to be listed in Artsy. I, I, I'm not yet because I, I don't belong to any gallery. Uh, in order to have... Yeah, you have to be through a gallery. And because of my connection with the residency program and their connection with the gallery who has, uh, uh, we are all represented. It's very much of an honor. And look at that. You have a uh, stamp going on now. Yes, I have my secret series, my, my uh, Banca Marga, which is uh, the Tibetan Buddhist concept of five roads. And those five roads lead you on a path to perfection. So I thought that was a fitting symbol for my legacy series. Uh, and so I will be releasing five, at five, five uh, every five years, I will do 20 paintings. Uh, the first exhibition, my first solo exhibition is July 9th here at Silver Street Studios. And that will kick off my, uh, my Banca Marga series. And I will do every five years until I'm 80 years old. And Lord will and I live that long. <laughs> and for those so please mark your calendars and, and I'll, I'll be teasing out more information, but you can't see anything yet because it's not going to come out until the July 9th. And for those who are not in Houston, I'm going to uh, make sh mm -hmm. ensure you that um, I will put together a virtual show so that anybody can access this, uh, this exhibition of right. yours. You'll, you'll be able to have a virtual experience as well as an in-person experience. And, you know, if you're a VIP, we'll, we'll see if maybe we get a little preview as well. So, Okay. I was just about to ask you about the private viewing. Yeah, we'll, see. we'll, uh, we'll be able, to, we'll be doing those invitations out very soon. The works are, I think, are lovely. I'm very, very proud of them. I think they're the best things I've done yet. Yay. I've seen them and he's right. <laughs> anyway, so what's new with me? I, uh, this week I had some um, time, well, it's not only this week, but the, the end of last week as well, to keep working on those um, surreal architectural images. So this is the last one. It's not yet completed, but I, I just want to uh, um, share with you um, the status of his new, new work. And what I so do... So these are created, right? Those are completely made up, imaginary architectural um, plazas and uh, buildings 
you know what I actually they don't do. exist, but I think they should. <laughs> what what I actually do is I love to to photograph decay and architectural decay, and uh, because they are so crumbled or don't make sense, I I take these elements and I, I try to to made up my own sort of construction, and um, it's a very very slow process just because it it takes so much time to to place all these elements together and make sense out of them. And, um, but yeah, I, I have other in the series, one that just sold, uh, I show you a second ago, and this is kind right. of a, uh, less of an abstract, but you know, I kind of, in, in this particular one, I split the outside wall in two and I wanted to show the, the, the entry of this uh, building. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, this one that has sold. All right, Lovely. and moving forward, the, the main feature work, the first one is called Petal Lines, and this is from the Synopsis series. It's um, actually a photograph uh, composed from different other uh, images. So uh, the, the background, it's made out of uh, um, petal of magnolia flowers. Um, then I have the birds. And then uh, uh, all those lines are um, uh, drawings. You know, um, the, the whole series has to do with a memory and, 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 and it's made to make you think of something and to connect with some moment in time. Um, when I look at this particular image, you know, I imagine uh myself as a child in Romania you know uh, sitting in on the ground on the grass uh under the magnolia tree and looking at the sky and I, what i see is you know birds flying there are some planes uh flying uh, high above and i'm always thinking oh my god one day i'm going to fly you know all these child memories uh, and you yeah and I, I, it is a soft image. It, it, it has to make you feel good when you look at it. And um, some, actually, somebody the the other Saturday when I was uh, when I had my studio open said that looks very Japanese. It actually looks very Chinese to me. But yeah, I can see the Japanese. You know, like those puppets, strings. Oh uh, yeah. I just think the whole thing is so luxurious. The, the, the texture on those flower petals, you can, you can imagine the velvety softness of them. And then to have those intersecting lines with these birds or planes or kites or whatever they are, uh, it's, it's just a very, very sensuous uh, image. And you're right, it, it, like we talked about before, the, many of the pieces in the series, it kind of looks like a memory feels uh, and 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 I just think that's a magical way of presenting something. The, I mean, that repetition gives the idea of time interrupted by some sort of thought or memory. I just think they're magnificent. And and it's it's very sensitive in a way, um, especially mm -hmm. magnolia uh, petal, magnolia flowers are known that while touched, it's over. It will brown immediately. Yeah. So it's a sense of um, a delicacy in a way, you know, everything it's uh, very fi fine. And the Beautiful. second one, it's called Southern Chill. It's uh, a floral uh, photography. And um, I have uh, several in this series and they are printed unlike others on vellum. Well, I choose to print on vellum because what happens is every picture that you print on vellum is unique. Uh, mm -hmm. The ink actually does not dry immediately like you print on paper. Instead, it stays um, on the surface of the vellum and it, it just uh, uh, combines... Um, the colors are combined with each other. It's so it's very hard for me to show you 
how exactly a print look like. This is the digital image, but it almost look, looks like a painting, almost like a watercolor painting. They are um, all these colors combined together and form a, a new unique uh, image. And um, well, Dan, uh, could we ask what what is vellum? If, if people aren't familiar so with the format, vellum is um, it's mostly used by architects. Uh, they are uh, they could copy. They, they has a, some sort of a transparency, but it's matte surface. But you can copy um, all kinds of um, blueprints. Uh, I don't know how to call it. You know, uh, so it's like it's a lot in drafting, and it's it's almost like a plastic sheet, like you would use on an overhead projector. It's kind of a, a plastic. It, it's matte. But it's uh, so it, it has some uh, some transparency. But uh, when the ink the when it goes through the printer and it sprays on the ink, that ink is wet when it comes out, and it it mm -hmm. it you just have to leave it until it dries it, it takes because time it will roll dry. around on the on the plastic. It takes time to dry, and there are a lot of uh, types of vellum out there. Ones that are. Um, um, that sucks the ink immediately, though it's not dry, but sucks it immediately. And some that it, the, the, the ink just stays a long time on the surface until it's drying. So yes, uh, this particular one, it's uh, a 14 by 14 print on, um, and it's coming with uh, this particular one in a frame that it's 17 by 21 inch. I, I think it's it's. A, can it's I ask a, you? How, can I ask you the process? Well, how yeah. did you create this? I mean, what am, what are we looking at? I I wanted to create this soft um, image, like you are an passing a, a passing a window. When you when you look in the window, is this um, misty uh, kind of a um, end of the summer fall uh, season? Uh, where the the temperatures outside are colder than inside, and it creates this uh, uh, mist on the window. How did I create it's this? It's the image that you're that you're peeking into to a hidden world. But what about the layers? How did you create so, the actual? So the, the the way I did it, I just I had a a, a, a plastic uh, mat, uh, translucent. Um, um, board and then behind this it's uh, a part of the flowers and behind of the the flowers um, there is a multicolored uh, sort of foam board that it's you know um, radiates all these um, rainbow color rainbow colors and i thought uh, what a great um background to use so this is how it comes together and, and and on the front of the very first panel i just uh, um, sprinkle some um, glycerin mixed with water so that they, the, the 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 bubble stays there for a longer time it doesn't dry up too fast beautiful I mean, so we're moving into your section now yeah, I have a couple of pieces I wanted to share that, that are really about texture. I love using texture in my work. I think it, it adds a dimension, obviously, a three-dimensional quality, but it, it, it takes you someplace the paint itself won't take you. And so I, I love to have that. Uh, this particular one is uh, called Hope. Uh, it is 24 by 18. I've got it here as well. And... Uh, the texture on it is just remarkable. Do you have a close-up? Yes. So what I did here is I actually used a lot of kind of a, um, a um, what is that stuff called? A gel mixture, uh, a gel medium, which works like a glue and it's, it's, it's archival and things. And then I mixed it with fabric. In this case, I believe it was uh, a pair of blue jeans. So it's, it's a really thick uh, textured look. And I, I just believe that that adds so much to the, to the experience of the painting. I love in my abstract to be able to have an experience of the painting from far away. But when you get closer, 
and, and let's face it, most of us don't live in palaces, so we get fairly close to the art that we live with. And that when you're close, you still have another kind of experience of the painting. And so this one is, is one you just want to reach out and touch. Uh, and I, was, uh, I, think it, I think it worked fairly well. I was always wondering what happened in my blue jeans, actually. Yeah, well, you don't leave things around too long. <laughs> <laughs> so every object can be transformed in a piece of art, right? Right. The cat needs to move faster. <laughs> and to shellac her. Uh, so what do we have here? The uh, this one is called Tot. Uh, this is a series I did that, uh, these are all small eight by tens and I wanted to play with texture without using any kind of texture medium. Uh, uh, some people use uh, gesso, some people use even things like baking soda uh, or mastic kind of stuff you use in, in working with tile. Uh, but I wanted to build texture just with paint. So this is a bunch, a bunch of paint. And uh, I, built, I built on layer after layer of color um, until I get the, uh, the look that I want. And they're small, uh, but to me, they're like little pieces of jewelry. They, uh, I, my, I use lots of gold, if you haven't noticed that. And uh, I just think that they, they're remarkable little pieces. Uh, and I just love the fact that they're all built with paint, no other, no other medium. You know, there is a trend, especially here in Houston, where people have big homes. They're always looking for large pieces. But I think True. small pieces are just as intimate, and you can, you can place them anywhere, really. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the space and it depends on, on kind of the, the relationship you want to have with the piece. I mean, this is an intimate little, little secret jewel box uh, that you, you can enjoy. Um, place it in a, a small place, put it by your bed on a, on a stand. It doesn't have to be on the wall. Uh, anyway, I just thought they were lovely. And I, I did 10 in this series. So there's a bunch of, I, I wasted a lot of paint. <laughs> Oh, Ron, we are back here. Uh, um, now, this was the end of our presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, this would be the time to, to ask us anything, really. Well? Nothing. Ryan, nothing. We always have a question. Questions. Do, Every, have a, question. Everything is clear? No, I have a question about the about the biannual i mean i'm just kind of curious how was attendance i mean coming out of what we've been through um yeah, it what, was, what, was it, what was it like how did it go it was the first day where i see a lot of people together um they all had masks on you know, even though the majority were vaccinated and uh i don't think i had great sales but uh I had fabulous interactions with people. They were curious about my um, artworks. We were talking about everything. Uh, a, a very, very um, great crowd, if you ask me. It was a very, very good crowd. I think uh, there, there was nowhere near what we had be before COVID. But let's face it, this is uh, now a year and a half since we've had one of these. We had to cancel the last two. Uh, because of, of COVID and, and, and quarantine uh, restrictions. But uh, so it, it was the first day out and there were a lot of people, uh, particularly compared to the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was not the crowds we used to get. But the people were lovely, as Bogdan mentioned. They were interested in the art. I had lots of lovely conversations, gave out lots of cards, got some names on my uh, mailing list. Uh, and, and really got to interact with people about my art, which is really the, the most important part. If they're ready to buy, they'll buy. Yes. But uh, to that be able to get my work in front of that many people for, and, and have conversations about it, that, that's golden to me. As I said before, it's great to have a sale, uh, a good sale, but it's also actually great to, to develop a relationship with uh, the people that comes into your studio because they will understand your work better. 
as they talk with mm-hmm. you, as they look at your art, they get familiar with it. And um, really, art is an investment. And once you buy a piece of art, you would have to, to live with it for a while. And listen, uh, I, I have a big, the, the piece here, the, so you can see it, the one of, the, of Mary and Jesus. I've been playing with that painting for some time now, and I just left it up and left the paints out. And so while I, in between people, I would continue to, to paint on that uh, piece. And that people love to see artists painting. And so that engendered a lot of conversations and a lot of input. And I would, people would come by and I say, you know, you know, I need to put this, this head thing around Mary uh, and, and what colors do you think I should use? And I would, I would have that conversation with people. So they felt like they were uh, a part of the process. And in fact, a couple came by right at nine o'clock to see how, how Mary had uh, pr- proceeded, how, how, what I had done since they had come in earlier that evening. So that was a lovely touch too. By you now, uh, uh, Mary and the nun, the nun that we show earlier, uh, the beginning of the show, uh-huh. it become almost an interactive paintings, painting. Yeah. Because everybody that comes on the hallway finds it so funny. They are taking pictures next to it. And it's, you know, it's, it's appear everywhere now. It's, yeah, it, it's she's, almost she's becoming dream. quite a celebrity. <laughs> but don't trust her because she'll hit you <laughs> when you least expect it. Anyway, guys, it's 11.30. Morgan. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> it's 11.30. It's oh. the end of our show. And we want to thank... As, as Morgan just... I know Morgan was here earlier, but uh, welcome and, and goodbye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan, I, okay. You now can watch the movie. Oh, okay. I'm just saying hi, I guess. I'm so confused right now, but I really like you guys a lot, oh. and I'm so happy for you, and like, congratulations on the artsy and everything. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank where you, you. Thank you. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Morgan? I am just outside Chicago, about 45 minutes Love north me. of Chicago in Illinois. Guys, I want to thank you uh, very much for being here today, and I want to thank uh, everybody that watch us on Facebook as well. And we hope to see you to future editions. It was a great pleasure. Magnificent. Have, have a wonderful week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. <laughs>